A U.S. veteran confronted Joe Biden on his support for the Iraq war. And um, this back and forth didn't go well. Joe got defensive and the veteran obviously is, uh, you know, really hurt by what the political class had him and his friends do. So let's take a look and then we'll discuss. Um, I'm an Air Force veteran here with the Army veteran. I was just wondering why we should vote for a war in the neighborhood. You know, thousands of our brothers and sisters difficult to watch. That one was difficult to watch. You could tell that that dude is hurting. You could tell that, uh, you know, he's haunted by what happened in Iraq. And that's, listen, of course you're going to be haunted. He said it. Listen, I lost friends. My brothers and sisters in uniform. I know many of them that died. You know, and um, he's in pain. He's in pain. And you have the other one saying, you guys had us hurt civilians, man. And what did Joe Biden do when he was confronted with this? He got defensive and he said, well, my son died too. And you think it doesn't matter to me? Of course it matters to me. Now, listen, if Joe Biden meant what he said there, then I think we could have a conversation about the degree of sympathy or forgiveness that's merited. If he meant what he said there, then, you know, basically what he's saying is, this impacts me too, and, like, I learned my lesson. I was wrong. That's what he's hinting at there. That's the underlying tone of what's being said. However, that's just not the reality. Joe Biden did not learn his lesson. This is the same thing Hillary did in 2016. Oh, yeah, it was the wrong vote. I shouldn't have done it. Okay, but then why are you advocating for all the wars that you want to happen now? You want to do more regime change? I thought you learned your lesson. What happened? So, what has Joe Biden done in the years since? Take a look. First of all, I actually like Dick Cheney for real. I, I get on with him. I think he's a decent man. I want to see him after we were elected. And I want to see him at the residence. Uh, and he and his wife were extremely gracious to Jill and to me. It probably sounds like I'm making this up when I say I learned from. But I spoke to this man repeatedly about this job. But he was extremely helpful and gracious about the office and the legal parameters of the office. There is no doubt who is responsible for this heinous use of chemical weapons in Syria. The Syrian regime. At President Obama's direction, all of us and his national security team have been in close touch with our foreign counterparts. The president believes, and I believe, that those who use chemical weapons against defenseless men, women, and children should and must be held accountable. And by the way, there have been uh, whistleblowers in the wake of the chemical weapons uh, attacks in Syria who've come out and said, hmm... 
they're not telling the truth about this. They're not telling the truth about this. The full story is not out. So we've been misled and lied to. Not too dissimilar from exactly what happened in the lead up to the Iraq war. Oh my God, Saddam Hussein. Oh my God, weapons of mass destruction. Oh my God, he's an imminent threat against us. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Just sit back and let him kill civilians? Oh my God, he's a brutal dictator. We got to topple him. Use the exact same arguments that were made against the Syrian government. Now, I'm not saying you have to, you know, defend Assad and say he's a good dude or whatever the hell. No. But this is absolutely, positively, none of our business. We are not the world police. We are not the moral center of the world. Every time we do regime change, there ends up being motiv motivations that are selfish. And that are for the military industrial complex. And that are for, you know, the empire and exploiting natural resources and all this stuff. So if Biden really learned his lesson about Iraq, then why have you repeatedly pushed the arguments for regime change in Syria? This is the same thing as Hillary. Oh yeah, I was wrong on Iraq. Anyway, let's talk about how we, we need to topple the Syrian government. How's it going to be any different than what happened in Iraq? You took out Saddam Hussein, and then you had ISIS and Al-Qaeda rise through the ranks. Iraq is obviously... It's been a disaster. We're still there. And you think, oh, if we, you know, if we somehow topple Assad by whatever means, direct invasion or funding jihadist rebels, let's say, uh, oh, it'll be okay. We'll topple him and then a, a Jeffersonian democracy will flourish. Oh, please. So he didn't learn his lesson. Giving George W. Bush a medal, the Liberty Medal, for spreading freedom, not only did you not learn your lesson, you are glorifying the guy who's a war criminal who did an illegal invasion of a country that didn't attack us and killed minimum 200,000 civilians and did torture as well. Saying he learned, quote, the legal parameters of the vice presidential office from Dick Cheney. That's like learning morality from Charles Manson. What are you talking about, dude? Listen, very simple. Joe Biden is a creature of Washington, D.C. He's in the swamp. He's bathing in the swamp. He doesn't see what you see. He doesn't see, oh my God. Oh my God, everybody around me is funded by the military industrial complex and pushing all these wars and they're funded by Wall Street and they're funded by, you know, all these special interests and lobbyists like Big Pharma and the for-profit health insurance companies and all the decisions are made to protect the powerful and not help working people. He doesn't see it. He's status quo Joe. So, listen, you do with this information what you will. But, iceberg dead ahead. If we have a repeat of the 2016 primary in 2020 and binds the nominee, God help us all. Because there's an 80% chance or more that Donald Trump wins re-election. And the only chance Biden would win, re would win election up against Trump, win the election, would be if there's a global economic crash, and the whole thing is just an anti-Trump vote. But if that happens, guess what? The person who would be in charge, first of all, he's got cognitive decline, which is a huge red flag, and it's crazy to put him in power. But beyond that, he's already talking about bringing the same Wall Street guys into the administration. Joe Biden was part of the administration that bailed out Wall Street, by the way. And he's going to bring in Wall Street guys into the administration... And what he's likely to do is, yet again, bail out the guys at the top, reinflate the bubble, keep screwing over working people, and perpetuate this monstrosity of an economy that we have now, which only works for the corporations in the top 1%, the billionaires. That's what he's going to do. Status quo Joe, through and through, do not go in that direction.